Morning, everybody. Welcome to the Forex Trading Asia Daily Currency Call, episode 293, uh, 19 of May, today, Singapore time. So, yeah, this is the currency call where you will get market economic updates, key support resistance levels, trade ideas, and more. This currency call is going to be very beneficial to both long term investors and short term traders. Here, we will be going through what could move prices, possible trade ideas, and also highlighting potential targets and risk. So a disclaimer here, any information shared during this session is not intended to be a trade recommendation. It is solely the opinion and views of the speaker. So please remember to do your own analysis prior to entering any trades. Okay, so first thing here, so tomorrow at 2 a.m., which is the May 20th of May, Singapore time, at 2 a.m., we have the FOMC minutes, meeting minutes release. So I'm going to get... Uh, Kim Hong here, currency analyst at LCMS Traders, to break to break down the minutes for us. Kim Hong. All right, it's been a while. Thanks, Jinwei. Okay, so tomorrow, yes, like what Jinwei has mentioned, at two hundred hours um, Singapore timing, um, the FOMC, the Federal Reserve, will actually be releasing the meeting minutes for the 29th of April's monetary policy meeting. Okay, so um, as we know. We pretty much know that since then, much has happened. Okay, employment slowed down, inflation spike, retail sales plunge as well. Okay, but um, this meeting, that 29th April meeting, was like quite a while ago. So it is pretty much unlikely that the minutes is going to move the market much. Okay, but that being said, we still have something to look forward to, or at least we can look into. The minutes to um, you know to get some clues as to what the Fed finds things about the recent hike in inflation. Okay, now during his press conference um, back in April 29th, okay, Fed Chair Jerome Powell said that you know what it's not now it's not the time yet to actually consider about quantitative easing tapering. Okay, and when it's the time, when it's the right time to do so, they will actually inform in advance. Okay, now what we want to pay attention to in the meeting minutes is when you know when will this when will the discussion actually take place okay meaning what conditions will trigger the fed to say you know what let's just get together and let's talk about a potential um tapering of quantitative easing okay so i don't know the, the conditions can be like um six months of crazy inflation you know like last month we saw a hike in inflation okay if this goes on for like some six or seven months or eight months, don't quote me, I'm just saying, you know, then the Fed may actually um, consider um, a such discussion, okay, of tapering back, um, of cutting back its quantitative easing. So that's pretty much the only point that we can look forward to, to take note of, okay? Now, um, but bear in mind that, yes, although the recent inflation has been a bit of a concern for the main street, main street meaning people like us, okay, the commoners, not the Wall Street, Okay, um, it's not too much of a concern, I would say, because like what the Fed has mentioned, um, they actually feel that this hike in this hike in inflation is actually transitory. Okay, as to why it is transitory, they actually give a long list of reasons um, explaining this and that. All right, now um, Gene has actually written up an article on U.S. inflation, and it will be published either today or tomorrow. Um, FTA, Forex Trading Asia, okay? So um, just head over to Forex Trading Asia and um, just read the article and you will know why the Fed finds that, you know, it's, it's no big deal, okay? This April's hike in inflation is, is just transitory and it will die down um, for the rest of this year and, you know, back to the 2% target range, okay? So that's all I have for you guys today. Until next time, back to you, Jinwei. Thanks for that, Gim Hong. Um, so in summary, the minute is not going to move market much. Pay attention to when will the discussion of the potential tapering of QE will take place. Am I right, Kim Hong? All right. So, yeah, thanks for that, Kim Hong. Um, yeah, and look forward to the inflation article written up by Jin. 
So right now, I'll pass the time to Scott right now for the dollar index. Scott. All right. Thank you very much. And uh, good to see you again, Gim Hong, as well. So look, as Gim Hong mentioned, you know, FOMC, US dollar, I think that was summarized pretty nicely. Now, if we have a look at what the US dollar did overnight, and my recent article mentioned that, you know, we did drop below uh, 90 support. Now, I've got the daily chart up here, thanks to Sam Trade, and we, we've seen this level before. Back in uh, February, back in the 25th of February, it tested, it was around 89.65 was the low here, just where my cursor is. So we are bouncing a little bit. It's obviously early in the piece right now, uh, where we are in the world and during the Asian session. So if I narrow things down just to the four hour time frame, we can see we got down to as low as 89.65 and we did see a small bounce. We did see some of the other currencies offer some, you know, some buying opportunities, but things did fade a little bit. And then we saw US equity markets again flip to, to what, you know, best described as, as risk off sentiment. Now, looking at the US dollar and a potential trade idea, I'd like to see it come back to, you know, 90 or so. Where it currently is trading at is, is a bit of no man's land. And it's, we need to see it to a point of interest with traders. So I think 90 and a test of 90 is going to be quite interesting, you know, just to see, you know, what the market wants to do. And if we do see a break to the upside, but currently how we're looking, we have broken through there. And we did have a couple of pieces of data at last night. We had the US building permits month on month was at 1.76 million, expected 1.77 million, but we are seeing some supply constraints. And honestly, I was a little surprised at how it really just broke through, uh, you know, earlier in the session last night. And also US housing starts month to month was 1.569 million, expected was 1.71. But again, the housing starts could be attributed to just a lack of the workforce that's present and also supply issues as, I've mentioned before, but the permits were slightly down, but really insignificant. So it's not really uh, pushing, you know, me to say it should have broken down like that. It did. Now let's pay attention to, as mentioned earlier, the FOMC uh, discussions that are coming out at 2335. And that's going to be, you know, we'll see what the market reacts to that. But currently I want to see it test 90 and then we'll see what it wants to do. But it's, uh, it's looking like the FOMC and the Fed are sort of the language that's coming out is suggesting that they're going to give some, some time frames on quantitative easing, which is, I think, uh, a little bit hawkish. It's not like we're in terrible shape here. And, but I agree with Gim Hong with transitory inflation. It's still really, you know, present. So I wouldn't be, you know, too concerned about that. But again, let's just wait and see what price action wants to do at 90. So no current trade until it tests that 90. And we'll see what it wants to do. Okay, thanks for that, Scott, the dollar index. Um, yeah, so right now, uh, today's currency focus is pound. So I'll pass the time to Jin. Jin, a um, founder of LCMS Traders million dollar trader trading account with more than $40 million on a daily basis. So yeah, Jin, pass the time to you now for the currency call on pound. All right, thanks for that, Jinwei. Um, so today being pound, dollar, looking at the pound dollar and the euro pound as well, um, we've seen, you know, if you attended the session or if you're listening to the session since Monday, all I've been saying is this week is all about the pound dollar. We've seen a lot of news come out for the pound dollar, just to show you what has happened so far. Um, just yesterday, Tuesday, we saw the pound with the employment numbers. Average earnings was 4%, expected a 4.5. Despite this being worse than expected, is still a positive number. So there's a good upside to this. Claimant count change was minus 19k um, now it now came out at minus 15.1 again a very good number more people going back to work more people less people claiming unemployment benefits so a very good number again for employment in terms of the uk um, employment change on a quarterly basis three months and a month of month for march at 84k 
way above the expected at of 50 and way better than previous of minus 73. So this is a big swing towards the upside for the UK and unemployment rate dropping from 4.9% to 4.8%. This impact, what impact did this news have on the pound dollar alone? Um, you can see here on the H4 time frame for the pound dollar, just starting the week at 1.4084. Over the past couple of days, we've seen that big upward move, about 130 pips towards the upside already. Now above the resistance of 1.4150. So what could happen to the pound dollar from this point onwards? It is now sitting at 1.4. 186. What could happen at this point? You know, back to the news, look at what could happen, what news is being released later today, not far off <clears throat> at 2 p.m. Singapore time, GMT plus eight. We have the UK CPI numbers month on month expected to go from 0.3% <clears throat> to a 0.6%. CPI on a yearly basis expected to go from 0.7 to 1.4%. So again, we're looking at inflationary, CPI is an inflationary indicator, inflationary numbers going towards that upside, moving towards the expected or towards the target from the Bank of England. With all that in mind, we're possibly going to see further upside with the pound dollar. Okay, if it does come out at 0 0.6 or above, if it does come out at 1.4 or above, we're going to see some upside to the pound dollar. But at this point, I don't think it will be massive upside, primarily because it is going to be slightly priced in. Um, the Bank of England has said that despite inflation targets hitting uh, or inflation hitting its targets, they will probably hold it for an extended period of time before taking action, similar to what the FOMC is saying as well, and as what Gim Hong and Scott was just talking about. So as same approach with the FOMC, the Bank of England is also taking that same approach. Inflation can hit this target. It probably will have to hit and maintain over that level for an extended period of time. So some upside, but might be capped a little bit. And then after that on Thursday, we have more pound news, not going to do too much for this one. And on Friday, we've got retail sales number from the UK. Retail sales number is highly seasonal, but it does have a big, big impact on the currency pair itself. You can see here retail sales number from the UK on a yearly basis was 7.2, right? Last year was a terrible number, COVID and all that hit. So it was a 7.2. This year, looking at as 36.8. Big, big upside on the year-on-year -year number. This will push prices significantly higher on Friday because that big print, that big data is possibly going to surprise up even if it's priced in, it's going to push sentiment towards the upside. So watch out for that. Core retail sales number on a yearly basis as well, going from 7.9 expected to hit 31.7%. So again, on a yearly basis, that big number is going to bring about some volatility towards the upside. On the monthly number, it looks a little bit more subdued. Core retail sales number, 4.9% expected to be a 4.2 and retail sales number was 5.4 expected a 4.5%. Um, at this point, I think the retail sales number might put a little bit of a dampener in, but we're still going to be pricing it in a little bit. I think next month's retail sales number is going to be um, quite significant. So this, although you might see some volatility, I'm still planning for the upside. So what you've heard me just say is, you know, we're looking at CPI numbers, possible upside. We're looking at retail sales number, possible upside. What all this means in terms on the charts is we've seen the pound dollar 
it has been climbing. And if I zoom out a little bit more, you can see that pretty much since April, since the start of April, it's been on that upward move. It's been on that upward move. Um, every down or every drop has been met with a bigger upside bounce, right? The last time we spoke about this, I was saying that it was likely to come down and hit 1.4 before bouncing back up. Um, it's done that right now. Again, this week, I'm anticipating that we're going to see the pound dollar come back down, right? Come back down, test this 1.4150 support before the news coming out and pushing it significantly higher back up towards that 1.4278 resistance level. Bear in mind this 1.4278 is a significantly high point. If I go out to the daily time frame, you can see the last time it hit close to that point, last time it came to about 1.4240 was back in 2021 in February, right? So 2021 Feb, um, quite a long time ago. And once it hit that point, it turned significantly back downwards again. So I still do think that it'll come up and test that resistance, but I would not anticipate it to break that significantly. So be very careful at that resistance level. And I did mention, you know, as we talk about the pound dollar, let's look at the euro pound, an update of yesterday's euro pound analysis. I said that it was likely to break or it might, if it does break that 8580, we could see it test further at this point right now, um, anticipating the pound dollar to drop a little bit before bouncing back up. I think I would adjust the Euro pound to say that it will possibly climb up towards the 8651 resistance before turning back down again. So as the pound dollar drops, we could see the Euro pound rise up a little bit more. And then as we see the pound dollar shoot up, then we can see the Euro pound turn back down that inverse relationship is going to be quite beneficial. So look for this to climb up towards the 8651 resistance. Let it reject that point before you look to sell it down. So look for selling opportunities at about 8641, you know, 20 pip stop loss, a good 50, 60 pip take profit level. You're looking at a one is to three risk reward ratio for the Euro pound. Um, I think I forgot to give you some levels on the pound dollar. So just quickly, pound dollar at about 1.4171, looking at buying opportunities, a 30, 40 pip stop loss for an 80 pip take profit level, a one is to two risk reward ratio towards the upside. Um, but be very, again, be very careful towards that resistance level. Okay, thank you, Jin. Yep, so generally pound, uh, good numbers, prices have been moving upwards and do watch out for the retail sales data on Friday. Um, yeah, so just want to put in the disclaimer here again. Um, yeah, any information shared during this session is not intended to be a trade recommendation. It is solely the opinion and views of the speaker. So please remember to do your own analysis prior to entering any trades. All right, so we are seeing a lot of um, upward movement in the US and pound uh, countries, the Western countries, but in the Asia side, we are seeing uh, second and third waves coming in. So this pandemic has taught us that we need an additional source of income. And uh, we have seen people trying to get uh, this source of income through Forex trading. So today we have Jonathan from Forex Briefcase to share with us how Forex Briefcase can help you in this aspect to earn from the Forex market without you doing anything. Yeah, John. Okay, thank you, Chin Wei, and uh, welcome all of you to our daily webinar. Okay, uh, my name is Jonathan, and I'm the partner of uh, Forex Briefcase. Today, I'm here to share with you a little bit more of what uh, we do. Okay, so if you are liking the analysis, if you are following us uh, every morning right here at 11 o'clock, okay, uh, this is the same approach that we take to make consistent returns from the market for us and our clients. So, <clears throat> what are the highlights of Forex Briefcase? Okay, uh, we are a managed account service trading the Forex market. We are 
globally across 12 countries and as of now, uh, more than 800 clients. Okay, um, we have been operating for 32 months and uh, so far we have grossed an ROI of 93.31%. Okay, that means that uh, what you can expect on an average number on a monthly basis is about 3% per month. And despite that, Okay, uh, we only have a maximum drawdown so far during this period of minus 2.24%. So as you can see, the risk is uh, managed to a very large extent. Okay, and on top of that, if you're wondering, okay, max drawdown 2.24%, but how many months have we been making money and how many have we been not making money? Okay, our winning rate is at 87.5%, which means if I bring you to the chart right here, um, over this period, bring your attention to the table below. That is only uh, for losing months throughout uh, the whole time. Okay, and as Jinwei mentioned, um, now we are starting to see slightly more uncertainty with the COVID situation. Okay, and if you are worried that this uncertainty could bring uh, some uh, negative impact to investments, okay, let me just bring your attention to 2020 last year where we do see uh, COVID-19 first impacting uh, the world, okay? So as you can see, yes, uh, in February, that's where the, the you know, 2.24% drawdown happened. Okay, that was about the time uh, COVID has hit us, okay? But relatively throughout the year, we still managed to gain, uh, take advantage of this volatility and managed to return about 20 over percent, okay, uh, for our clients last year. This year alone, okay, up to date, we are already up 11.13%. Okay, that is excluding the current month of May uh, up to April. Okay, and uh, just yesterday, if I bring your attention to this screenshot, uh, we have made an ROI of 1.68%. Okay, so uh, on this account, this client's account, which you can see 1.68%, we made about $3,000 over dollars, okay? Uh, but um, the ROI is same across all clients. What you what you get is uh, based on your account size, okay? So if you would like to enjoy, make, take full advantage of these returns, get your account started, don't wait any longer. Uh, we're operating, we have trades going in on a daily basis. Uh, just put your name down in the chat. Uh, the links are also being fired out by Jinwei, registered there. Okay, the account will be fully under your name and in your control. It could be set up within a single day and even in an hour, if you, are, you know, you to get it done immediately. And there will be an agreement signed between all parties. So it is a very formal arrangement. Okay, not, not a casual investment product. So I look forward to see you guys um, on board. Okay, to enjoy uh, this fantastic year with us again. Thank you. Okay, thanks so much, Jonathan, for the introduction of Forex Briefcase. So yeah, I have pasted the links for Forex Briefcase in the chat. So do click on it uh, and then check out the website, scroll all the way down to put in your details for the Forex Briefcase team to contact you. Yeah, so with that, we have come to the end of the session. Uh, yeah, we will see you guys tomorrow for another episode of the currency call on uh, yen and gold yep see you guys tomorrow and goodbye